Sports. High drive, center field, hit the wall, grand slam. This is magnificent. Got a fantasy question? Email fantasybaseball at cbsi.com. Get ready to win your league. Where fantasy becomes reality. Now here's Frank, Scott, Chris, and Adam. All right, who's got questions? Welcome in to our YouTube exclusive Q&A mailbag. Going to be hanging out for the next hour. Frank Stanfield here with Chris Towers until about 7.30. And then we'll tag in Scott White until right around 8 o'clock. Chris, I have a question for you. Are you ready? Oh, is that the question? Yeah, I have, I have two questions for you. <laughs> okay, you I, yes, I am. Okay, was that the first? Okay, yes, I am ready. <laughs> All right, second question. How did you enjoy hosting? I never, I never quite enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. You know, I had plans for stuff I was gonna do, and then I get a text message, oh, you got a host today, and it's like, well, now I got to do that instead, and it's, it's a lot of work, man. I don't want to do that. that. That's, it's not fun. Well, you held it down, and I do appreciate it. I was banged up a little bit yesterday. Great job yesterday on the podcast. Hope Thought you're feeling better. Really good. Yes, I, I am feeling much better. So, I woke up yesterday. Voice was all like raspy. We did an emergency podcast. I had to film the intro like five different times. Not that people needed to know that. But anyway, it's not enough about us. We're here for you, the people, to answer your questions. And we're working double duty. So after we do this, we'll stick around until 8 p.m. Uh, we will be back around midnight tonight for our usual full-length podcast. Looking forward to that as well. It will be the first time that Scott, Chris, and myself are all together in what feels like a month. It's been quite a while. So looking forward to that, we'll give you some updates on the Mets and Braves game. They're playing the first leg of a doubleheader right now. They are in the sixth inning. Ozzie Albee just hit a home run. Jacob deGrom, get you some updates on him. Some news if, in case you're setting your lineups now for the week. Nelson Cruz, Fernando Tatis back in their respective lineups. Kyle Tucker is not. Looks like he's going to be back in the mid to late part of this week. Josh Donaldson remains out for the Minnesota Twins. Jesus Lazardo, option to AAA. Can we drop him? I think so, probably. Adalberto Mondesi went back to the IL. Jeff McNeil returned for the New York Mets. And Fran Mel Reyes is going to start a rehab assignment. We'll talk about all of that a little bit more on our full-length podcast later on. Do we have any questions that are coming in right now? Yes, we do. There were questions here before we even started. So let's jump right in, Chris. All right, this was from Adam Duncan. Logan Gilbert or Sonny Gray? Rest of season. I would still go with Sonny Gray. I, I think we've seen some some good stuff from Logan Gilbert, but I don't think we've really seen much uh, top of the rotation potential from him. And and I still think Sonny Gray does. Yeah, you know, I don't know if he has top of the rotation potential, but you're talking about someone who, you know, should be good for a lot of strikeouts. The innings are always a little frustrating, but like. If you think they're going to have a similar ERA, and I think that's a reasonable assumption, uh, Sonny Gray is probably going to have 15 to 20% more strikeouts, and so I would go with him. I would go with Sonny Gray as well, who is currently on the IL, and it sounds like maybe he'll miss one, two more starts. Uh, yeah. But Logan Gilbert over his last three has been better. His most recent start against Tampa Bay was kind of meh. 5.2 innings, four runs, seven earned runs, but he does have 13 or more swinging strikes in three straight games. So I really like what I've seen from Logan Gilbert, but I will yeah. still go with uh, Sonny Gray there. Sonny Gray, Chris, I kind of have this Blake Snell vibe with where I think we're still kind of living off of that 2019 where Sonny Gray was great. I don't know that he's ever going to go back to that level, but I think he's serviceable. He's like a SP3-ish, like borderline SP3, SP4. Yeah, I mean, he's got a 342 ERA in 50 innings this season with you know, 70, 65 strikeouts. Like that's... That's the must-start pitcher, I think. Yeah, I would say he's like on that border. But yeah, Sonny Gray over Logan Gilbert. This next one's from Cable. Cable, C-A-B-L, Cable, Cable. 759, Adbert Azalai or Alex Wood, rest of the season. Azalai is returning on Monday, and he has a two-start week, Chris. Who would you go with there? Uh, I really struggle with Azalai because... <sighs> I don't know. It seems like he should be better than he is. He and maybe it's just the ERA. You know, maybe it's just that he he kind of 
contest consistently has had a an inflated ERA this season, but everything else has been pretty good. So I I think I would go Alzale at this point. You know, it might be dependent on if you're in a points league because Wood is RP eligible and Alzale isn't, I believe. So if you're in a points league, it's probably Wood, but uh otherwise I think Alzale. I'm pretty sure that Alzale got off to a bad start to the season and then just like really settled in. So let's see his first. Yeah. So he only yeah, he, more than five innings once in his first three starts. This is super arbitrary what I'm doing, but if we look at from April 29th on for Adbert Alzali, a 3.59 ERA with a 1.08 whip over a strikeout per inning, 2.3 walks per nine. Those are really good numbers for Adbert Alzali yeah. last eight starts. Uh, and Alex Wood has basically gone in the other direction. His last four starts, he's got an 8.50 ERA. Yeah, it's been really ugly. Yeah, I, I think I would go with Alzali there, but it it's pretty close. Uh, this next one's from Give Yourself a Raise. Well, if we could. I would love to. I don't think that's possible, though. 10-team points league. Kirilov seems to be a platoon player now. Is he worth dropping? Hmm. I'm pretty sure Kirilov has really good numbers against lefties this year because I looked this up recently, and I was pleasantly surprised that both him and Trevor Larnick have been very good against lefties. Yeah, is it is it a platoon, or is it like a... You know, he's just not playing every day because of the wrist or because of some defensive issues. Or you know, I think that's a different question. Um, it has with any question where it's should I drop this player? It always depends on who you're going to pick up. You should not just drop Kirilov. But in a ten team points league, he's certainly not a must roster player. I don't think. Yeah, I, I the way that you kind of struggle with Alzali, I tr- I kind of struggle with Kirilov because. His underlying numbers, his stack has numbers are ridiculous, but mm-hmm. it's not really amounting to anything yet. His expected batting average, 308, expected slug, 582. Those are ridiculous numbers. Those are, yeah. those are, those are very you know, something you'd expect from one of the five or 10 best hitters in baseball. And it just it hasn't really translated to on field production yet. Uh, Kirilov splits for the season. Yeah, he's got an 813 OPS versus lefties. Oddly enough, 684 OPS versus right-handed pitching. So not really hmm. sure what's going on there. He has still much worse plate discipline against lefties, though. Six. He a is... lot of it. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. BABIP's not a huge difference, but we're talking about pretty small sample sizes. Yeah. He has started six of the last seven games for the twins. So I think the playing time is fine, but in a 10 team points league, he's not a must roster. I think that's a good way to put it. And I would imagine that there is a better hitter out there than. Alex Kirilov at this point. All righty. We are moving down the line. Who do we got here? Austin Collins. I need power in a head-to-head categories league. Who are some good batters to trade for that won't cost too much to acquire? Chris, I kind of like the idea of trading for players that are on the verge of returning from the IL right now. And if does that mean you can get them for cheaper than usual? Springer, you're probably still going to have to pay a lot for, but yeah, Michael Conforto comes to mind as someone who I think is yeah. going to be back soon. I would like to. Yeah, probably the next couple of weeks. He hasn't yeah. started his rehab assignment yet. Yeah, I, I, I would be looking into him. I know you brought up Corey Seager yesterday, yeah. possibly trying to trade like Wander Franco for him in a redraft league. I think he's another one that can provide power. Uh, Fred Mil Reyes is going on a rehab assignment. I, I mentioned that earlier on, and I'm sure you can get him for dirt cheap, and he can... He can provide a lot of power. So uh, is there anyone else that you're thinking of? Maybe a buy low situation for hopefully some hitters that are going to start to come around. Today is officially foreign substance policy day. Jacob DeGrom was the first starting pitcher to be checked. They looked inside of his hat. They looked at his glove, his hands. They even looked inside of his belt. So it's getting a little raunchy there. But um, yeah, like if we start the day. Yeah, right. If, If we start to see a shift in offense here, Chris, then maybe some of these power bats that have been struggling. Are going to come around. Yeah, uh, w- one that comes to mind is Cole Calhoun, who is probably going to be back from the IL within the next week or so. It sounds like um, he's you know kind of an empty batting average, but or an empty power guy. But you know, it's not a it's it's not a terrible lineup situation if he's hitting at the top of the the Diamondbacks lineup. He can be a thirty homer guy. Um, Joey Gallo seems like an obvious one. I know he's been really bad so far this season, but the track Wait. record there is is worth buying into. Who? Joey Gallo. Oh, 
exactly. That guy. Um, I think he's probably going to get traded too. So the lineup con- context could improve dramatically. I've, I've yeah. seen that. Padres and linked I, to him and I just think he'll be better than he has been so far. You know, he, he's, he's got a long enough track record where, where I believe that, you know, like he's got an ISO, I think under 200 still. He's having like, a super for, weird for, season for Joey Gallo. That's extremely, extremely low. So I, I would expect moving forward. He'll be a lot better than that. And I wouldn't mind buying high ish on players that are performing right now, like Kyle Schwarber, who's a little bit banged up. So make sure he's healthy. But Justin Upton has been performing really well. Yeah. Gives you a lot of power. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle, someone who's been hitting a ton of home runs recently. Dominic Smith, batting average is still low, but the uh, I think he has like four home runs this month, so power coming around a little sure. bit there for him. Uh, those are a few names that you can look at for cheap if you need some power. This next one's from Joshua Briggs. McNeil off the IL. Should I drop Eduardo Escobar or Gavin Lux to activate him? Who did I see was... The White Sox. The White Sox are looking at adding Eduardo Escobar. That'd be a good... Uh, Pretty good lineup, certainly an improved lineup and a better park. So I, I think I would lean towards dropping Lux, but um, I don't know. What do you think? I I think it depends on the. Does it depend on the format? I, Gavin Lux doesn't really steal. Yeah, he just hasn't been very good. Like he's fast, he just hasn't been running. Um, if it's a points league, I, I would take Eduardo Escobar one hundred percent over Gavin Lux. I, I don't think that that is really close. Yeah, uh, I think I'd go him either way. Yeah, I think you're right about that. In a redraft league, if there's any kind of keeper or dynasty, definitely hold on to Gavin Lux. He's been better-ish, but still not living up to his prospect hype. But for redraft leagues, I would drop Gavin Lux to uh, get Jeff McNeil back in the lineup. All right, loaded question. This is always a tough one to answer, so I will stall a little bit, Chris, while you think about it. But this one's from K. Ellis Talks, or just Kellis Talks. Dynasty buy lows and sell highs. So this is always an interesting question because it can be <clears throat> prospects that are off to slow starts, obviously right now in the minors that obviously, you know, we still have a lot of expectation for coming into the season. Uh, it could be younger ish players that are randomly breaking out this year that come to mind. And I know Scott recently wrote a dynasty stock watch and like Corbin Burns was like way up there, obviously because he's taken like this huge step forward though. You know, this spin rate situation is kind of weird for him. So, Chris, anybody that come to mind for you? Dynasty buy lows or sell highs? Yeah, I mean, I think if you're looking at a sell high, it's probably someone who's off to a really, really good start relative to expectations who is a little bit older. Like, the first one that came to mind was someone like Cedric Mullins, but he's only 26. Matt Olson's only 27, so maybe those aren't the best examples. Maybe... I have one, Chris. Okay. J.D. Martinez. Jay Martinez. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's since, since the start of May, his OPS is right around 800. I don't know if people okay. realize that he, he is, he was awesome in April. He was basically the opposite of every other hitter. Yeah. And since the beginning of May, I'll pull it up to, to know exactly. But yeah, the, I, I noticed the OPS is right around 800 for JD Martinez. That's so an interesting he has, one. He's batting 285 since then, only five home runs in, let's see how many games, 41 games. Uh, the OPS, I sold them too high. 772, Chris. Okay. Yeah, I, I was thinking of someone like Marcus Simeon who has continued to hit really well since the start of May. Um, That's fair. But I don't think he's this good and he's an older player. Uh, I would think, you know, if you're if you're looking to sell high, I, I think he's a pretty good hitter, but I don't think Brian Reynolds is this good. Um, so I, I think there's a buy, a sell high opportunity there. And if you're talking about a buy low, I mean... I think Mookie Betts might be almost too obvious as a as a buy low, just because I think he's so much better than what we've seen so far. Um, but if you did get that opportunity, I think he would definitely be somebody to uh, try to buy low on. I think Manny Machado would be another one. Uh, OPS still under 800 for Manny Machado. Um, <clears throat> Two names that come to mind, Chris, if you are not competing this year and you're mm-hmm. trying to think about years to come. Matt Chapman, who had surgery in the off season and has not looked like himself this year. I think yeah. that he's still better than what he's shown. And I think that the injury, the, um, you know, the surgery that he had in the off season is probably playing into, uh, I agree with that. How he's played thus far. And Cody Bellinger, who's currently on the IL and he's basically in the same situation. He had shoulder surgery in the off season. Hasn't lived up to expectations. The obvious prospects like 
I'm sure anyone who plays in a dynasty league is not going to sell Jared Kelnick because he got yeah. demoted. But if they are, it's something I would look into doing. Uh, Joe Adele, if you trust that eventually the tools will kind of play out and he and I do. a player that we all think that he can be, yeah. then you should be trying to buy on Joe Adele. The last one I'll mention, a buy high-ish prospect, Rowanzi Contreras, who I've talked about a lot, but came over to the Pirates in the Jameson Tyone trade, and he has destroyed double A this season. So he's mm. been really good. And I think he's only like 20 years old. The Pirates are going to play it safe with him. They're going to, uh, they're going to be pretty yeah. patient there. Before and we I would suggest a sell high Austin Riley. Austin. I just, uh, yeah. Austin Riley. Yeah. Like the strikeouts are way up. The power hasn't really been there this season. He's had a couple of really good stretches and the overall numbers are still pretty good, but that 362 BABIP is carrying a lot of the weight for him right now in a way that I don't think is sustainable. Yeah, and his underlying numbers are much lower. Well, his batting average, not as excellent, yeah. but his batting average is 283. Entering today, his expected batting average is 257. So yeah. strikeouts are a little bit higher than they were last year. Um, I think in redraft, too, like if you can get a legitimate, I don't know, top like 75 player, maybe even top 100 for Austin Riley, it's something that I would... Look into doing before we get to the rest of your questions. Help us out here on YouTube. Smash the like. We are shooting for 100 likes today. And I actually had a meeting with uh, Ben Schrager. You might know him from Fantasy Football Today, the producer there. Uh, he said, My job depends on it. So we have to get to at least 100. So likes. I, I feel like you guys should hit that like button. Yes, please. Please smash the like button. And while you're at it, if you are here watching and you don't subscribe to our YouTube channel, what are you doing? Make sure you subscribe. If you're watching right now, we're trying to hit 7,500 by the end of June. Right now, we are just over 7,300. So smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that little notification bell. You'll get an alert every single time we go live. And speaking of live, the Mets and the Braves are on right now. I'll give you a little bit of an update here. Edwin Diaz in for the save. It's the top of the seventh inning. Don't be alarmed. It is a doubleheader. I've fallen for that so many times this year, Chris. <laughs> A closer's in in the seventh inning. I'm like, oh my God, what's happening? And then I realized it's a doubleheader. So Edwin Diaz is in. Jacob DeGrom made his return to the mound. Five shutout, one hit, two walks, six strikeouts. He was Jacob DeGrom. He would <laughs> 18 swinging strikes on 70 good. pitches. Still kind of limited, but I think it makes sense. He's had a shoulder and an elbow injury. Averaged 99.6 miles per hour on the fastball. Please just stay healthy, Jacob DeGrom, because you are amazing. And we need you around. Let's get back into some questions, Chris. Uh, this next one, Savage 101. Can I drop Taylor Walls for Andrelton Simmons in a deep league? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Andrelton Simmons is, is much of a fantasy asset even in deep league, but I think that's fine. I, I am very interested to see what is going to happen with the Tampa Bay Rays lineup construction moving forward because mm -hmm. I play in a 15-team Roto League where I dropped Taylor Walls last night just because... I think he's probably going to lose some playing time as a result yep. of Wander freaking Franco getting called up. Super pumped up about that. Uh, so yeah, I'm all right dropping Taylor Walls. This next one is from Chris. We're, we're going to go with Chris. Chris K. Uh, traded Tucker and Burns. Let's assume that is Kyle Tucker and Corbin Burns for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and Ozzy Albies back in April. Ozzy Albies, by the way, hit a home run earlier in this game against the Mets. Uh, so what do you think there, Chris? Tucker and Burns for Vlad and Albies back in April. It's it's worked out okay. Uh, I mean, Vlad's been you know the best player in fantasy. Albies has been okay. Um, Albies has been really good since but, the start of May. But Tucker and Burns have obviously been quite good themselves. Especially you know Tucker got off to that weirdly slow start that we kept saying he was going to heat up from. He did. Uh, that seems like a fair trade now and in April. Since the start of May, all right, I said really good. I probably oversold it a little bit for Ozzy Albies, but 269 batting average, five homers, six steals, 29 RBI, 25 runs in 43 games. He doesn't hurt you anywhere. He's just that's good. Yeah, he's he's just kind of a, a B plus everywhere. All right, this one's from Scott Pigsley. Is the Yerminator droppable? Sadly, I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, he was he still is a really fun story and everything he's overcome to being a journeyman in the minor leagues and, and having his opportunity earlier this season. But I didn't feel like the playing time has taken a step back recently and rightfully so because his bat has really, really, yeah, he just hasn't been any good since like 
midway through April, May, May, even a little bit earlier, maybe. This one's from Aaron Conley. Dylan Bundy or leave an open starting position spot? Feel like zero is better than the risk of negative points from Bundy. The risk of negative points in a points league is very, very slim. So I don't think you can ever justify a negative spot, uh, an empty roster spot in a points league. In a roto league, I think it's slightly different because there is the chance that you could just wreck your your ratios with a bad start. But I, I will say, if you're the commissioner of a league, you should not allow empty roster spots. You should always have to have someone in the roster, in the lineup, even if it's someone who's not active. Yeah. I mean, I had Dylan Bundy as a bus coming into the season, Chris, but it wasn't because I thought he would just bottom out completely. Yeah. I just thought he was being overvalued earlier on in draft season. But man, 6.68 ERA, 1.39 whip. If this question is more so just like you want a spot on your roster to be able to stream other starting pitchers, I am perfectly fine dropping Dylan Bundy and, and going that route. This next one's from Caleb Baker. How do we feel about Vladimir Gutierrez, starting pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds? What range would we consider dropping him for? I know he got rocked last time out, and that he did. And he was pitching over his head because he is a fly ball pitcher and his home park is great American ballpark. So obviously those things do not work very well together. Uh, he's got a 3.86 ERA 1.32 whip with an X FIP that is over five, Chris. So Vladimir Gutierrez, yeah. I'll pull up some of the most added starting pitchers and, and see who not, we not a top 100, probably not a top 120 starting pitcher. Uh, I think he's probably top 100, right? I mean, Really, all you need to do is be healthy to be a top 100 starting pitcher. Yeah, there's 150 starting pitchers at any point in baseball, and you know he doesn't really have much of a minor league track record to speak of. He's old. He doesn't have like mm -hmm. overwhelmingly good stuff. He basically had like 17 good innings at AAA. I will say, if Shane McClanahan is available in your league, please yes. go make that move right now because I mean I've he should be rostered. It doesn't matter. Like I would drop Dylan Bundy for him. Yeah, he's a must roster player. We we had a a roundtable article that we do every Sunday. We answer questions from Dan Schneier, and it's published on the site. You can actually go find it right now, cbsports.com slash fantasy slash baseball. And I think all three of us either had Shane McClanahan as the must-add starting pitcher. I think you had him as relief pitcher, Chris. Because yes, I did cheat. He has SPARP eligibility, but, man, he's looked really good. Uh, they're stretching him out a little bit further now with Tyler Glass now's injury, so... Definitely would make that swap. Would you drop Vladimir Gutierrez, Chris, for Ross Stripling? Sure. Would yeah, you do it got for? Good would you do it for James Caprillion? Yep. Would you do it for Matt Manning? Yep. Would you do it for Patrick Sandoval? Yep. How about one more fringy-ish name here? Uh, I feel like Eric Fetty's probably too far down the list, right? I, would like, I think I might rather have Eric Fetty. All right, cool. So basically, you can drop Vladimir Gutierrez. Yeah. What kind of beer while watching a game? Come on, Andrew. It's for me. I mean, yeah, a line of Google. It's a uh, line of Google. Summer time. Come on, let's be honest. But anything, you know. I love an up? IPA. I'm, I'm an IPA guy. You're an IPA guy. Yeah. Love, love, a, love a session IPA during the day. You know, you get like a, you got like the Brooklyn Brewery. I was having one. Uh, earlier after work, a little Stonewall in uh, session IPA, only 95 calories. So, you know, Chris, you that. realize that your workday never ends, right? Like <laughs> you said, well, after I'm, work I'm allowed to have a beer. Sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and if you're ever in Hollywood, I just realized I'm wearing my favorite bar from Hollywood, Florida, the old Hollywood beer house. So if you're ever in Hollywood, Florida, check it out. Is that close to Orlando? Uh, no, Hollywood, Florida is close to Fort Lauderdale. So if you're yeah. ever in South Florida for work, Frank, which yeah. at some point I feel like you have to be. Probably. Yeah. I am actually going. You've never met your boss in person, have you? No. Unless you consider yourself my boss. I'm definitely not your boss. <laughs> you kind of were at some point. So at one point, maybe, but no, not not at all now. No, I have not met like my actual boss. Yeah, you got to got to get down to Fort Lauderdale. I am actually going to Orlando, Florida for July 4th weekend for a nice little getaway. So there you go. Looking forward to that. All right. Disney. This next one is from Matthew Nearing. Traded Brandon Woodruff, Dom Smith, and I would assume Ian Happ. Happ. Yeah, this is probably, yeah. J, J Happ doesn't have much. So let's assume Brandon Woodruff, Dom Smith, and Ian Happ received Cattell Marte, Paul Goldschmidt, and Joey Gallo two weeks ago. 
Uh, I'm assuming you have good pitching depth to be able to afford trading Woodruff. And in which case, I think it's an okay trade. I think it's pretty fair. Woodruff, obviously, I think is you know pretty far and away the best player in this trade. He's a you know close to a top six starting pitcher for me. Um, but I, I think you could make a case that Cattell Marte, Paul Goldschmidt, and Joey Gallo are the three best players after Brandon Woodruff in this uh, deal. So I, I think it's fine if you if you needed the hitting. It's you know I wish I was getting the second and third hitters, at least one of them had been performing a little better than Goldschmidt and, and Gallo have, but in Dom Smith and Ian Happ, I don't think you're giving up much unless yeah. it's like a 15 team league. It's basically Woodruff for a lot of okay depth. Uh, could tell Marte yeah, one better. really good hitter. And then two who should be starters. If I was just ranking all of these players, it would be Woodruff, could tell Marte Goldschmidt, Gallo, and then Dom Smith and Ian Happ on the bottom there. So, if you have the pitching depth to to get rid of it, I think it's it's okay. But um, in a vacuum, uh, I might have might have stuck with Brandon Woodruff there. And it's time for who? The hey. super oh, big Scotty Doves. What's going on, Scott? Not much. Just here to chat it up. What about you guys? It's not often that we talk before midnight. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. This is this is, this, is this is the wee hours in the morning, as far as I'm concerned. Not the sure. uh, the sun's still out. We're not we're not used to doing stuff no. around this time. See, you uh, see the sun back there. See how bright that is? Wow, it's blinding. It's blinding. Uh, speaking of which, Scott's here. Let's get hyped. Let's smash that like button. We are at 40 right, likes I'm right now. Take off, guys. All right, Chris. We'll see you later. Uh, I'm don't hungry. Drink, don't drink too many beers. Uh, I, I've had my two beers. I'm good. Oh, you drank two beers now. I had two beers. Yeah. Next thing you know, we'll find out you drank three beers. No, no. <laughs> Oh, that would be next, though. If I was going to have one more, it would be three. So, all right. I'll see you guys. We'll see you later. Smash that like button. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we're going to continue answering your questions here up until about 8 p.m. And I think that Mets and Braves game is in the books. And it is. Edwin Diaz picked up his 15th save of the season. Scott, Jacob DeGrom looked a lot like Jacob DeGrom today. Well, when hasn't he? <laughs> right. It's, it's not about how he looks when he's pitching. It's about how he feels afterward. We didn't get any reports yet, right? That you know he like strained his neck and not yet. Okay. Not yet. Would hopefully, hopefully you? never. Yeah. Well. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. All right. Let's get back to answering some questions here. Where do we leave off? Max Haldman, head to head categories league. What are your ten most ideal categories to use? Also, what scoring format? Uh, for 10 team six keeper league would be your favorite uh, in a 10 team league Scott I want more players starting in my lineup because shallower the league I want the lineups to be deeper so that I, I just don't like when the waiver wire is too strong you know what I'm saying so yeah I, yeah, yeah you kind of have to manufacture scarcity when you play in a shallower league like that so I, I think that makes sense uh, you, you wouldn't want to, you'd, you'd have to be careful how you go about it. Cause you wouldn't want to throw off the balance of hitters and pitchers. So you probably need to add a pitcher spot for every hitter spot you add. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think if you do something like six starting pitchers, three relief pitchers, kind of like a roto lineup, five outfielders, a corner, a middle, you play with one catcher or two, you know, whatever floats your boat. Most people don't play in two catcher leagues. At least most people that listen to a podcast, you know, that's got, I'll tweet something out about two catcher leagues and people are like, you actually play in those? Yeah. Well, I mean, judging by the roster ship percentages, the breakdown of, of catchers specifically, it would, it yeah. would seem that, yeah, two catcher, per, two catcher formats are traditional and they're common in like industry leagues. You know, just like 15 team <laughs> roto leagues are common in industry leagues, but who's actually playing them? Who's listening? Yeah. Not that many people. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, how about the first part of this question? Scott, you're... 10 most ideal categories to use. Are you a batting average or OBP guy? Do you prefer a quality start to wins? Because it Look, seems like some people have made that argument. Past I, I, I am a traditionalist. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with the 10 traditional categories, and, and it would be my preference. Uh, I, I, think, I think if you're, if you're trying to make something that's maybe a little more, uh, a little fairer, a little... A little more modern, I guess, than replacing home runs with 
total bases isn't a bad idea. You reward the doubles and the triples, and you reward them on uh, without double rewarding home runs. Which you know, if you if you added a total bases category, or if you added slugging percentage instead of home runs, you would be double rewarding batting average in that case. Uh, so total bases and uh, changing batting average to OBP. Um, uh, there's there's been some. There, there's been some movement toward changing wins to quality starts, but it's become it's 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 become so like there's so few pitchers that go six innings with consistency anymore that exactly. in a way quality starts almost seems scarcer than wins. So I don't know I don't know that that makes the most sense. I've I've flirted with the idea of like having just innings, purely innings, instead of wins or quality starts or anything like that. But I, I haven't actually put it to the test and can't really speak to how it turns out if you do that. I think adding innings as a sixth category makes a lot of sense rather than replacing wins because then it's still you still have to pay attention to your ratios. You can't, I guess, to the same level do a Marmol strategy because innings pitched, you're going to get crushed in that category every week as well. So I, I like doing saves plus holds a lot. As well, Scott, because it's like at that point you're just looking at the the true skill of the reliever. We don't have to roster, you know, garbage relievers on our team that just might give us saves like Gregory Soto or something like that, or yeah. like yeah, no, I Victoria, so I understand the argument. I'm I am I am fond of just keeping it saves though because the pursuit of saves is almost like a game within the game. Yeah, and I, I, I it would really change the the dichotomy of the relief pitcher position in a way that I don't think is necessarily beneficial, even though it makes it easier. All right. This next question is from J man 415. Should I drop Tony Gonsolin fearing this season will be riddled with injuries and he won't go longer than five. And I know his most recent starts got his velocity was down and there was talk of some shoulder soreness. So you were very excited about Tony Gonsolin. Where are you at now? Concerned. I think these concerns are fair. Should you drop them? I mean, it's always a question of what you'd be picking up. Who could you drop instead? I have not, I have not given serious thought to any of the, to dropping Gonsolin in any of the leagues where I have him. Would you drop him for Shane McClanahan if he were available? I would rather have Shane McClanahan at this point. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be the example that I keep going to. He's only three <laughs> percent rostered. I spoke about him with uh, Chris earlier on. Just super excited about Shane McClanahan. And I've been saying it for, I don't know, the past month, right, Scott? Like, in Dynasty Leagues, go out and buy low on McClanahan. And now they're stretching him out a little bit further. And the swinging strike rate is ridiculous. He's throwing... Second only to DeGrom. Yeah, he's throwing four different pitches now. So, yeah, nice arsenal. Look, it's the Tampa Bay Rays organization. Lots to like there with Shane McClanahan. I'll throw a few more names your way, Scott. Would you drop Tony Gonsolin for any of... Ross Stripling, Patrick Sandoval, James Caprillion, Matt Manning. Those are a few of the most added starting pitchers right now. Nah, none of them are doing it for me. All right. This next one is from El Duderino, 35. Cease versus Manoa versus McCullers for a keeper league where you can keep seven total. I'm looking for the best long-term return. Well, this one should be pretty easy, right, Scott? <laughs> you know who I'm going to say. I know what you're going to say. You could have you could have stopped at cease. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you see what I did there? Yes. Okay. I will cease to answer this question from my perspective. No. Um I think it's yeah, I think it is Dylan Cease. I still Lance McCullers, he's been around for a while. Like he's not young anymore and I think maybe some people still think he is, but hasn't really ever lived up to expectations. Feels I like mean, he's pretty he, good. He's fine. Yeah. I mean, he's I good. just think, I just think Cease could be, um, Cease could be better than Giolito. Yeah. In the long run. And I know you guys spoke about Manoa on today's podcast, last night's podcast as well, but the fly ball rate is very high. And pitching in that park in Buffalo, it's not going to be a good combination there for Alec Manoa. This next one is from, oh, we already answered one of your questions, but we'll do it again because we're feeling nice. Kellis talks trade. Adele for Wainwright and Jeter Downs in an 18-team head-to-head points dynasty league. So this is right up your alley, Scott, because this is not too far off from the Scott White dynasty league. Yeah, 20, it's three quarters of the way to the 24-team dynasty league that I run. Would you and, do it? Um, 
trade Adele and Wainwright for Downs? I mean, yeah, no. no. <laughs> Adele, Adele for Wainwright and Downs. Oh, okay. Adele for Wainwright. Okay, sorry, I read it wrong. Uh, okay, that that that's that makes more sense because Downs is, you know, the lesser prospect than Adele. I mean, obviously, there's no longevity with Wainwright, so this you would have to be you you would have to either be deep in starting pitching or not really caring about this year. Like if Wainwright has no short term value to you, then I this seems fine to me. This seems fine. Uh, I I do have. I do have some concerns about whether Adele is going to be everything um, everything he's been hyped to be because of the strikeout issues even at AAA. Mm-hmm. But he's so young still, I think. I think it's better not to overthink it. And unless Wainwright is helping you right now and you have a shot at really going places this year, then it's fine. All right. We have a lot of questions coming in here, Scott. So let's okay. ramp it up a little bit. This one's from Kostra. Most frustrating player you've had to hold on to so far this season, whether it's injuries, not playing for uh, as well as you wanted. I think I have Adalberto Mondesi in one league, and it's he's back on the IL. It's it's just been a disaster all year. Yeah, uh, frustrating. I would say, um, I mean Dylan Bundy. I have moved on in a couple leagues, but. I, I was thinking about it in Tout Wars, which is a 15 teamer, and I came pretty close to dropping him. But, you know, I go back and look at his April numbers, and they were fine. It just makes me wonder. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say Dylan Bundy. I'm sure if I had longer to think about it, I might come up with a better answer. This next one's from Austin, 6x6, 12 team Roto League. Would you drop Josh Rojas for any of Jake Fraley, Akil Badu, Trevor Larnick, Jock Peterson, Mike Yastrzemski? Garrett Hampson, Andrew McCutcheon, or Willie Calhoun? I'm not especially inclined to. Just if only for the versatility of Rojas. And he'll get hot again, I'm sure. Uh, if you need a hot hand play for right now, like, I don't know. They're, they're all, they're, they're, there's a bunch there that are of similar range of value. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a decision I'd sweat too hard either way. I think, it kind of depends on what you need. If you just need a little bit more pop, Yastrzemski has looked much better in the month of June. So, mm, um, And Peterson. Yeah, Jock Peterson. And if you just need speed, Garrett Hampson, is, you know, he's run quite a bit this year. So, I mean, McCutcheon's been awesome since... Uh, I'm actually writing an article. I was in the middle of writing it before I hopped in here about players um, comparing players' April numbers to their since April numbers. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these guys are on that list, like how much better they've been since... Since April into Jack Peterson, um, I don't think Mikey Strimsky's actually going to make the cut. But I looked into him, and Andrew McCutcheon too is another one that much better since since April ended. Yeah, I we talked about Ozzy Albies a little bit earlier, and he was another one where as soon as April ended, he's he's been much better. This next one's from Jason Molinari. Can you explain the difference between Statcast hard hit and Fangraphs hard hit? They often differ. Also, what is the threshold for StatCast data to be useful? So they they come from two different stat providers, the hard hit rate. I know that for StatCast, it's any batted ball over 95 miles per hour. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you know the specifics, Scott, about where, they're, where they come from, the sources. So StatCast is... is, is my understanding is fan graphs is more of like estimating whether it's a hard hit ball. Uh, I can't, man, I can't remember what the factors are though, but it's like based on where it lands and how long it took to get there or something like that. They, I, I don't know. I, I can't remember to be honest. <laughs> my, my, my takeaway is basically that Statcast is more accurate because it's it it know it actually knows whether it meets this threshold of being a hard hit ball or not when the fan graphs measurement is kind of just estimating it based on factors surrounding the ball that was hit if that makes sense. So what I just read was the fan graphs hard hit rate comes from Baseball Info Solutions and I just assumed the Statcast one comes from like a different provider. Well, it comes from the, it comes from Statcast itself, the camera system. Yeah. So I think it's just more accurate there. Yeah. Uh, 
The second question, also, what is the threshold for StackCast data to be useful? I've kind of wrestled with this a, a, a little bit recently, Scott, because I find myself buying the StackCast data for some players, and then for others, I just kind of look the other way for it. And I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I think some of the StackCast expected numbers are different based on the type of player that you are. So, like, Randy Rosarena comes up a lot for this because his, his expected numbers are terrible. But mm. I think that's because, like, he has a lot of soft contact, but when he makes hard contact, it's really hard. And he's also really fast. So he has the ability to like beat out infield singles and stuff. So he kind of defies expected numbers. I don't know if I'm doing this justice, but like I've found myself like kind of picking and choosing where I use the stat cast data, if that makes sense. Well, I, I mean, the one thing I can say for sure is that stat cast the expected stats on StatCast, I feel like, have come as close as we ever have to estimating what a player's numbers should be up to this point. But they're not predictive. So, you know, and, and we talk about this all the time. I give, okay, a player has this hard hit rate, this launch angle so far, he should have these numbers. And, and, and so, you know, if they're off from their actual numbers, um, uh, one interpretation is to say, uh, uh, okay, so he's obviously bound to regress or something. But that's only assuming he sticks to the same hard hit rate and the same launch angle, which correct um, itself can fluctuate over the course of the season. So it's 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 still not perfect, but it's it's hand it it's a handy shortcut and uh, in a lot of ways better information than we've ever had before. Yeah, it's very similar to how we use XFIP and expected ERA for pitchers. And it's descriptive, not predictive, which is basically what Scott was saying is that based on what they've done, this is what their numbers should be. It doesn't mean that that's what their numbers are going to be moving forward because they need to continue either pitching or hitting the way that they have to hopefully earn those numbers uh, that we're seeing as expected numbers. This next one's from Forest Law. Kirloff and Meadows have been up against an unusual amount of starting lefties it's not really a question but we were talking about, <laughs> it's a uh, statement <laughs> we were talking about alex Kirloff a little bit earlier on and um his ops versus lefties is way better against righties which i don't know if there's anything to see there but uh yeah it was weird i know meadows has been very bad against lefties this season but still his overall numbers specifically home runs and and rbi uh have been very good. Oh, there was another question here for Chris about music. Sorry, we didn't get to that one. This one's from... the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah, same here. This one's from Jackson Hill. Hold on to or drop Sixto Sanchez, just in general. Well, I don't have him stashed anywhere myself. I can't tell you how many leagues he's available, and so I've passed him over. the The hard part is you can't you can't stash him in an IL spot, and so. You know, that makes him really hard to stash. I don't I don't think he's mustache by any means. This next one's from Aaron Perch, Ahmed Rosario or JP Crawford rest of season. Both have been very hot. JB Crawford in June has been fantastic. Ahmed Rosario has been pretty good since yeah. the start of May. So I would take Rosario. Yeah, similar, but Rosario that has more more of a chance for stolen bases. So he's the one. This next one's from Alexander Dynasty Five Keepers by Tatis. For Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, and F um, Freddie Peralta. This year with the expectation to contend for the next 10 years. I have Acuna already. So give up Wheeler, Nola, and Freddie Peralta for Fernando Tatis. I think that's... F <sighs> <laughs> okay, so for some reason I was reading that Peralta is David Peralta, but... First names are important, people. It's half a person's name. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's too... Okay, hang on. I'm answering before processing here because I know you want to fit more questions in. So let me just... Only five players are being kept. It's going to be really hard to keep all three of those pitchers, presumably. And if you're out of it for this year, Wheeler's old anyway. Yeah, I think... I think if it's a keep everyone scenario, I might shy away from this. But keeping only five, I think you 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 consolidate for the for the better player there and, and Tatis. 
All right, where are we at on likes right now? 62. Not enough. Not enough. We got to get up to 100. Not enough. We have to get to 100 again. If we don't get to 100 by 8 p.m., I'm going to lose my job, Scott. They actually <laughs> oh, told me so uh, it looks wow. like Chris is going to be hosting today's podcast later on tonight as well. So we got to get to 100. We have to <laughs> 100 likes. Please make that happen. Smash a like. And if you're here watching Smash it, it. haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please subscribe. We do appreciate it. This one's from Jonah. Sell high on Julio Arias? Question mark. Well, Arias has a 3.54 ERA, 3.45 XFIP. All the underlying numbers are very good. 1.00 whip over a strikeout per inning. Career best control, 1.4 walks per nine. Yeah. Expected ERA, 3.59. I think the only reason you try and sell him, Scott, is if you think he's going to be on some kind of innings limit. And I don't know that the Dodgers have that luxury anymore. Yeah, but... It's been a long time since we've seen an organization say, "Well, we don't have anyone else to use in this spot, so we're just gonna we're just gonna let him go fifty innings more than we wanted to let him go." You know, like, nobody does that anymore. So uh, I'd actually be concerned about that. I do have him as a top twenty-five pitcher, I think. So we gotta come to grips with what selling high actually means. But I'd explore the possibility, sure. All right, just pulling up our pitching ranks real quick. And Scott, you have Julio Rios at 21. I have him at 20, and Chris has him at 22. So, yeah, we're all it's kind of in lockstep. Unanimity. On. Yeah, and I, I would probably ask for... We always kind of go to outfield because it's like the biggest hitter position, but like I think a top 20-ish outfielder is fair. Like Try to acquire George Springer as he's returning, something like that. Like I, I'd be all right with a trade like that. Scott doesn't like it. I just, everybody, everybody keeps, everybody who's been hurt keeps getting hurt again. Yeah. How about Yordan Alvarez? <laughs> That's a superstitious way of looking at it, but. Would you do it for Yordan Alvarez, Chris? Uh, Scott? I'm not Chris. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're not. Uh, this next one is from Matt Gibson. Have to drop someone. Jared Kelnick, Turk Skubal, or Sixto Sanchez? I changed my mind. I want to do it for Jordan Alvarez. I think you need to aim higher than that. All right. Now to Matt Gibson's question. I would prefer to drop Sixto Sanchez. I would agree. This one is from Joel Woods. Who to target while selling high on Marcus Semyon? When do we sell Trevor Rogers due to any concerns? Marcus Semyon is a top, I want to say like top three shortstop in both formats right now. Head to head points and Roto. So... Yeah. Like if you're selling high, I'm looking for a top 15 starting pitcher, a top 10 to 15 outfielder, Scott, something like that. Yeah. I mean, you got to sell, you got to sell really high. Yeah. That's, I mean, I don't even know, like, who are you replacing Mark at, at short, shortstop or second base, wherever you're playing Simeon? What are you backfilling that spot with? Because, it, it seems like it would be a huge downgrade no matter how you look at it, unless you're getting one back in the trade. But um, Rogers, due to the innings concerns, I mean, sooner than later, you got to start shopping him because that could, that could become a real, like early in the second half, that will likely become an issue. So before the all star break. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd probably want to have it done before the All Star break. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, mid July, try and try and make it happen within his next two or three starts. Really, would you would you flip Rogers for Aaron Nola if that was a possibility? Because I th think I would. I still have Nola ranked higher, so I guess I should say yes to that. I heard what you guys said last night. Like, I'm with you. I don't really know what's wrong with Aaron Nola. Like, He's throwing his fastball more. It's getting hit hard. I notice his ground ball rate is a career low. I don't know why that's happening. Like maybe he's trying to pitch higher in the zone this year and, and that's leading to like more line drives and fly balls. But yeah, I mean, if that ground ball rate gets back on track, like the swinging strike rate still looks really good. The strikeouts are there. The walks are fine. I, Aaron Nola is a weird one right now, but I, I think I would do it. I, I would trade Trevor Rogers to get Aaron Nola. Uh, this one is from Forrest. Brandon Rogers or Jed Lowry rest of season. Rogers. All right. From Peter, what price should you pay to get? Let's assume that's Kyle Tucker. 
What other Tucker would it be? Michael Tucker? I don't know why. I have like Preston Tucker on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> His brother? Um, uh, oh, geez. A lot. Uh, you should pay. Uh, uh, who was that pitcher turn, we just had? <laughs> you can turn Marcus Semien into Kyle Tucker, Scott. Would you do it or would you ask for t- Kyle Tucker plus? I think I'd have for, ask for. I think I'd ask for plus. Mm hmm. I think I would. I think we're, we're I think just, Simeon's performance justifies that. But I will point out Tucker is on that list I was referring to earlier, players who've been who are just awful in April and have been amazing since then. Would you trade either Julio Arias or Trevor Rogers, we just spoke about for Kyle Tucker? I, I mean, if it's a roto league, I, I feel like maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I need to look at the numbers again, but I feel like I value Tucker a lot more in a roto league than a points league. Uh, I would agree with that. I think that's yeah. Fair. Well, he's striking out less this year, and he's also running less, so maybe that's not fair. Eight hmm. hmm. percent walk rate is fine ish. I think I think Tucker's a fair return for Rogers. It kind of depends if you need, you know, if you're how much you're going to miss the pitcher. And, you know, we've talked before about how it's a difficult time to trade pitching right now because everything's trending hitter all of a sudden. Kyle Tucker is averaging 3.4 fantasy points per game among outfielders, which is tied for 10th. Tied for 10th among outfielders. Same amount as Cedric Mullins, Whit Merrifield, Cattell Marte. It's better than Michael Brantley. It's better than Yordan Alvarez. Better than Austin Meadows. So. Yeah, with Maryfield. I'm, su- I'm surprised with Maryfield's still that high in points. Kyle Tucker, man. He is awesome. This one's from uh, Neagle Laguna. Gilbert, Sale, McClanahan as a replacement for Glass now. Go I would McClanahan. Go, I would go McClanahan. I, I updated my ranking, Scott. I think I moved him inside my top 50 starting pitchers. Something pretty aggressive on McClanahan. I, if you have an IL spot to play with. Uh, SP51, I moved him up to. If you have an IS spot to play with, you know maybe maybe somebody's in it, but somebody you can drop. Uh, it might be a good time to to go ahead and stash away Chris Sale. I mean, we've we've seen Cindergard and Severino both get hurt on the rehab assignment, so it could happen to Sale too. You can't count your chickens before they hatch. But this, he's he's close to a rehab assignment. This next one's from Casey. Time to move on from Zach Eflin. The ERA is at four point three nine with a one point two seven WHIP. Great com- control only. One walk per nine. Um, the underlying numbers are great, too. 3.35 XFIP, 3.56 Sierra. Yeah, I, I feel like Eflin and kind of Nathan Avaldi. I could probably name a couple other pitchers. Like They're right on the like 10-team, 12-team border, you know, where if it's a 12-teamer, hard to imagine me dropping Eflin, who still has a 3.35 XFIP. I mean, that's really good. Um. But if I'm in a 10-teamer, okay, he's he's probably pretty replaceable. This next one is from Lamont Williams. Grade the trade in a dynasty 20-team points league. Give Dalton Jeffries and Gilberto Jimenez for Jorge Polanco. 20-team dynasty league. Okay, I would not do that. No, I agree I, with you. I don't. I don't know much about Gilberto Jimenez. Just being completely honest, but Dalton Jeffries, there was some hype about him coming into the season. Yeah, and and I think it being that deep of a dynasty league, uh, you you need to value your prospects more than that. Of course, I don't know the whole economy of your league, yeah. and maybe prospects are kept on equal footing as major leaguers. Um, but in, in most of my leagues of that depth, they're not. Gilberto Jimenez is the fifth-ranked prospect in the Red Sox organization, according to MLB Pipeline, and he has a 70 speed tool. So he is known for running, which I guess doesn't matter as much in a points league, but still, I like Dalton Jeffers. I uh, yeah. I guess we're grading it C-. minus. This next one's from uh, Jonah. Have Zach Wheeler, Berrios, Musgrove, Arias, Castillo, Peralta, Mai, Scooble, Manoa. Should I sell some for hitting? Help? If so, who can I get? Oh, gosh, this is a long list. Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, um, let's just say if you were trying to sell high on one or two of these names, I think Freddie Peralta comes to mind for me. If you can get anything, not anything, but if you can get value for Casey Mize 
with this threat of him yeah being shut right. down at some point. Mize is more likely to get worse than better from here. Not not necessarily in in like ratios, but just in in impact because of the innings. But I don't know that he's established enough value to this point to really give you the kind of hitting help you're looking for. Um, honestly, Julio Urias, if you want like a really good hitter, you're just talking about him as a sell high. And and Freddie Peralta should will, will probably have innings concerns coming up soon as well. So those would be the two. You need to aim high, but those would be the two I'd be looking to shop. All right. Let's just answer as many of these as we possibly can, uh, Scott. From Josh, how do you feel about Mondesi? Is he worth dropping? No. Uh, probably in, in a points league, would you? In a points league, sure. All right. But, but not anything that rewards steals on their own. You talked about buying low on Mookie bets. That was with Chris. Is Trevor Rogers and Xander Bogarts for Mookie an overpay if I've got Wander Franco? I think so. I think that is an overpay as well. Yeah. Maybe would you do Trevor Rogers and Wander Franco for Mookie Betts in a redraft? In a redraft, yeah. All right. So counter with that instead of giving up uh, Bogarts. Next one. Thoughts on Chaz McCormick batting second for the Astros a lot recently, but will probably lose playing time when Tucker is back. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's a lot of long term appeal there. Too many strikeouts and not consistent enough playing time. Prior to Jack Flaherty's injury, I traded Cedric Mullins and Jack Flaherty for Zach Wheeler and Kyle Tucker. Head to head points league thoughts. I think that's a that was a pretty even trade before he got hurt. Now that he is hurt, yeah, I, I think you're you made out nicely. Oh yeah. Next one: Are we starting Albert Alzali tonight? Wind is blowing in. Oh baby. Uh yeah, I mean, if if it's him or nothing, if that's the choice you're talking about, I, I think against against the Indians, I, I bet on Azalai. Yeah, but I do, I do wonder if he's if it's going to be like one of those four inning starts because he's coming back from injury. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. This next one's from Daniel: Is Carlos Carrasco worth stashing in a league with two IL spots? I've been holding him, but have lost John Means and Adalberto Mondesi. I would say. I, I mean, I'd rather stash Means and Mondesi. We really don't know when Carrasco's coming back at this point. I would be surprised if it's before, like, mid-August. So I don't think it's a must. We are at 99 likes. Who's going to get it? Come on, one more. Who's going to get it? Yeah! We're at we one more. Yes! I get to keep my job, Scott. Woo! Let's go. Woo! Very nice. nice. Appreciate all of you. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. Please rate the trade. Getting Freddie Freeman and Whit Merrifield for Wander Franco. I would. Uh, is this a redraft? It has to be. If it's a redraft, like it's. Oh, it's like an A plus plus plus. Yeah, yeah. I would. I, I would. I would trade Wander Franco for either Freeman or Merrifield, much less both in a redraft. Yep. Next one, is Wilson Contreras a keeper still in a dynasty league since catchers are so weak? Oh, come on. It depends how many keepers. It depends how big the dynasty league. If it's a league where you just keep everybody, I mean, yeah, obviously, like, he's in his prime. Like, I feel like uh, he hasn't lived up to expectations, but he's still better than, mo like, most catchers anyway. Yeah. I, I would s just go on top of mind. 12-team league. He probably gets drafted in the ten to round ten to twelve range next year. Yeah. So you use that however you need to. All right. Cole for Zach Wheeler and a Taiwan Walker. Garrett Cole for Zach Wheeler and Taiwan Walker. Hmm. Not in like a twelve teamer. Have to be it'd have to be a deeper league than that to make for it to make sense. All right. Rank these three hitters in terms of upside. Adam Heath and Scott. To be honest, I did not read the question before I put it up on the screen. <laughs> How would you rank well, him? I, I assume he means uh, Jason Adam, Mike Heath, and Luke Scott. <laughs> right? Sure. That, that was a bunch of first names, wasn't it? Like, that, that, I just, three players. Well, obviously, because, uh, anyway. Obviously, Scott is number one on this list. Adam and Heath, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, in a dynasty league, how much should Wander Franco be going for? 
going for like a lot. He's the number one prospect in a dynasty league. He was probably getting drafted in all, in all the dynasty startup drafts we did back in January and February. He was like a second rounder. And now he's up. So yeah. even more than that in a dynasty league. Scott offered me a massive trade earlier in the season in his dynasty league. I have Wander Franco. It's a 24 team head to head points league. And it was, it was like Jack Flaherty, Raphael Devers. There was a few other pieces there, but that was like the, the crux of it. There, it there were some other pieces on both sides, but yeah, Flaherty. It was a bad trade. Yeah. I mean, my team it was the difference open. between keeping Franco for free. Yeah. And keeping Devers and Flaherty for a modest amount of money. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, Frank didn't take it. But it was yeah. also a 24 team league. So how applicable is it to anybody watching? I don't right. Know. Uh what value does Mike Tr Trout still have? He's still ranked inside of all of our top twenties. You know what? It's gonna be back in a month at longest. Yeah. Unless he suffers a setback. What do you think of uh, what do you think Brandon Crawford is worth right now? Hmm. I I still imagine his trade value is fairly low just because it, people are rightfully skeptical of it. I mean, you don't see 34-year-old shortstops put up career numbers mm -hmm. ever. <laughs> um yeah, I I mean, if if you're you're trying to shop him, you go to, you go to the person who's most desperate for a shortstop, and you still think is like actually paying attention and wanting to improve at this point. And uh, I don't know, aim for like his fourth best pitcher or his second best outfielder, something like that. Yeah, it's see all how, see where that takes you. It's all about need at that point. It's just like find someone who needs a shortstop and and try and offer a realistic trade uh question for scott what would your walk-up song be if you were an mlb batter and if you were closer what would your entrance song be frank too i need answers <sighs> i'm a big metallica guy i always thought the possibility of walking out to ride the lightning would just be amazing so well i wouldn't want anything too derivative i always thought like the way uh duran duran notorious starts out that no no Notorious. Yeah, Didi like, Gregorius used to walk out to that. Well, yeah, but that didn't that didn't that get that get sampled or something? Yeah, it got sampled in a in a Biggie Small song. Yeah. Okay, I'm talking about the original yeah. from the '80s <laughs> that was used in Donnie Darko. That you song. Wanna, you want to hear how young I am, Scott? Yeah. When uh, someone sent us a team name Tuesday last week, I think it was Jack Boyce. He always sends us good ones. He sent us one about the song uh, from ABBA. Gimme, gimme, gimme your man after midnight. And the beginning of that song was mm -hmm. sampled for a Madonna song called Hung Up. And that's where I, I just, I always thought it was from. And I was like, wait, what? This is from another song? So <laughs> I was just super confused. But that was, yeah. that was my, uh, my random story of the day. Okay, there's so many here that we didn't get to. We'll stay for two more minutes. Uh, is Brandon Lau worth rostering? Not in a 10-team league. 12-team uh, points. Probably not. 12 team categories, maybe. That's I mean, that's that's exactly where I was going. 12 team roto or deeper, I think yes. Um any kind of points league or anything shallower than that, I would not. All right. What else do we have here? Pa -pa 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 -da, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Would you trade Fran Mill Reyes for Blake Snell in Roto? Fran Mill Reyes going on in a rehab assignment. I uh, totally I think it would I think I would lean no. I think I'd rather have race at this point, but it, it kind of depends on need. I just think at Roto it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to know when to start now. Ten team categories league. I've got Sandy Alcantara, Charlie Morton, Brandon Woodruff, Darvish, Malley, Arias, Hendricks, and Trevor Rogers. Rest of pitching is just closers and RP to lower ratios. Should I sell for batting? Well, that depends on if you really need batting. Um in a ten team categories league. You might. Uh, uh, a lot of the same names here. Like, if you can cash in on Trevor Rogers now, sure. I think it's something that you can look into doing and, you know, ask for a Kyle Tucker type player or maybe even someone even better than him. I would suspect that Morton, Malley, and Hendricks 
don't hold much trade value in a 10 team league, especially a 10 team categories league. So I think you're better off holding on to them. So yeah, Rogers and Arias. I mean, we're back to those two potentially shopping them for a high end hitter. Frank is staying. That is where we are going to end today's live Q and a mailbag. Thank you for everyone for coming to hang out. We will be here later on tonight to do our normal podcast right around midnight Eastern time. Uh, I've got to just dive into all 30. Let's be honest, Frank. 12 30. Yeah. Let's just, let's start at 1am while we're at it, Scott. Uh, we do appreciate all of you, all of you for coming to hang out. Sorry if we didn't get to your question. We'll be here again next Monday. As usual, you can email us in fantasy baseball at CBSI. Send your questions there. Leave us a question on an Apple podcast review. We'll try to get to it there, but we do appreciate all of you coming and hanging out and helping save my job for Scott. I am Frank. We will see you later on tonight. Bye-bye.